Uh, Dear, sorry that uh, we're having to talk uh, under these circumstances, but uh, if you could kind of reflect on your time with Tavares and, and what's kind of going through your mind right now, uh, knowing what he meant to you. Oh, man, it's, you know, sad occasion. Uh, you know, Jack was more than a teammate to me. You know, he was a brother. We came to the U of A together. We were roommates. Uh, you know, stayed in contact, got a chance to visit each other. And, you know, I mean, just a special guy. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, you, you look at how dynamic he was as a quarterback and, and the way he was able to slip into the second round of the 2006 draft when you put on tape and you look at those old videos on YouTube. What do you think? <laughs> you know, I was – Talking to uh, Cal Dickerson and some other guys, I'm just talking about, you know, his arm. Kid had a cannon. Uh, that was the first guy I ever knew that could throw the ball and you can hear it coming before it got to you. You know, by our freshman year, I think our first practice together, did a little five yard out route and he just bullied it in. I looked at D and I was like, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> <laughs> we got to teach him how to do a touch pass. I mean, just, you know, he had the build, he had the speed, um, you know, just a great athlete. Yeah, we keep hearing, you kind of touched on it, just how exceptional he was as a teammate. What do you remember about just how he was able to engage with his teammates? Um, you know, Jack was, <laughs> it, it took him a while to open up. Um, I was fortunate to get a chance to get to know him because like I said, we were roommates and, you know, you got a kid from West Memphis, Arkansas, and you got another ki uh, kid from Montgomery, Alabama. We really didn't know each other. So the icebreaker was, hey, do you want to play Madden? Do you play the game? So, you know, that was the icebreaker. And, you know, one thing about him, every morning he used to listen to the same group and he would blast his radio. And I was like, what's going on? He was like, man, I'm homesick. So, you know, we – then talked about, you know, how we both big mama's boys and we loved our moms. And, you know, we talked to our mom two or three times a day. And, you know, now just reflecting back some of our stories from, you know, when we played ball to the story, uh, I was telling my wife that he called me one morning, it had to be about 5, 30, 6 in the morning. And he was like, hey, you finna see that um, the Vikings are bringing in Brett Favre to, re to replace me. And I was like, really? He was like, yeah. And I said, uh, are you going to – he's still getting paid the same amount. And he was like, yeah. And so I hung up the phone. And he called me back. He was like, did you lose your signal? I was like, no. I was like, man, listen, you're going to sit behind and learn from one of the best quarterbacks that ever played the game. You're going to get paid the same amount. And the only thing you got to do now is hold a clipboard. Like, <laughs> you should be happy. I, and I told him, I said, hey, Jack, you can't come out in the real world and make 40000 a year. So the money that they're paying you, enjoy it. Have a great attitude and just learn. And so, you know, we always laugh and talk about that moment. And, you know, we had other moments that we just reflect on and stuff. Yeah, and then his time with Russell Wilson. I saw the tweet today just how Russell was showing love for Tavares. And when you look back on that Super Bowl 2014 and, and watching your old roommate play in the big game, right. what about that? It was exciting. And, you know, uh, you cheer for your roommate, you know, uh, you pray for him, you have conversations. He always used to get on to me because he's like, hey, you never seen me play. And so I was like, what's the big deal? I know you. I mean, we talk, we see each other after the season. And he gave me so much grief in 2015 that uh, he was like, listen, I'm playing in Dallas. I'm sending you tickets. I need you to come and support and, you know, see how he played the Cowboys and stuff. We went to dinner the night before we laughed, we talked. But, you know, it was a dream come true um, just to see somebody that you knew, that, you know, that you went to the U of A with to be on the biggest stage and, and to actually win the Super Bowl. You know, I was excited for him. Yeah, one last thing, just about – what he was trying to do as a coach with Tennessee State, you know, having coached their quarterbacks, seems like this is somebody who is on the right path in terms of somebody who was referred to as a mentor. Yeah, um, you know, I talked to him once he first took the job at TSU, and, the, you know, one thing, he's like, they, they work at it. They don't understand that you have to put in the work. You know, a lot of kids these days with social media, you know, they see all the – 
your superstars, your Russell Wilsons and all that, and they just think they can go out and walk on the field and, you know, do what a Russell Wilson does or a Jared Goff without putting in the work. And so T had an unbelievable work ethic. I mean, from when I first met him, you know, he was like, hey, let's go, you know, I don't need you to catch. I need to, you know, throw some balls. You know, let's go work out. Let's go run. It was, I mean, he had a focus like no other. And it just rubbed off on the rest of us. Uh, you know, Pierre, Cal Dickerson, myself. Jack was always ready to work. Uh, didn't mind putting in the hard work. And, you know, a guy like that, it's just, it's a great guy to have. And if I had a son that was playing ball, I'd definitely, you know, send him to Tavares and let him be up under Tavares' leadership. Yeah, a lot of high yeah. points for the way he was able to get out there and compete. Hey, Darius, thanks so much for the time. I appreciate it. Yeah, we're going. All Thank right, you, you too.